Hi, hello. Welcome back to Sheila Bobby Handmade. My name is Caitlin. You can find me on the internet as Sheila Bobby on Instagram, Ravelry, here on YouTube, just about everywhere. Welcome back. Um, today is episode four, and while <laughs> we're gonna have to have a discussion about knitting and knitting expectations and what I think should be done and shouldn't be done. We're going to talk about that. It's going to be a discussion plus showing you what I have to show you today. But I have a lot of projects on Body Island. Let's just get it out there. There's a lot of projects on Body Island and that is stressful. Um, so I feel like I'm not making a lot of progress but in actuality I am. I'm making a lot of progress because I have four of my major works in progress are on Body Island and we have already talked about how much I love Body Island and avoid it at all costs. So we'll get into that. Um, so I do not have any finished objects today um, and that is because of Body Island. I, I will admit that is 100% because of Body Island. I thought I might have a pair of socks but I focused a lot on my sweater projects and so there's a half finished object and that's going to lead us into work works in progress. So I'll show you that now. So this is my half, half, half finished object. It is my most ardently socks. I completed the first sock of the pair and I am in love with this pattern. It is easy enough to remember the like pattern repeat still having to keep track of like what you did previously and continue that throughout the foot of the sock but it's enjoyable it's a simple pattern repeat and easily remembered easily trackable i love it so and i love the texture that it gives so i'll give you a close-up of that texture again so it's a lace type of texture and we talked about this in the previous episode where I feel like the pattern does this yarn justice but the yarn does not do the pattern justice so I feel like um, this particular yarn combination does not work with the pattern in the sense of showing off that texture really well and the actual intent of the pattern but that doesn't bother me in this because like I said it makes the yarn really really pretty and textured and I love a good textured sock so that works for me um, but yeah I think a plain colored or solid color semi solid color or very very lightly variegated would work for this pattern to show off that lace detail but I like the way that it's looking in these socks so this sock is done it is shorty exactly how it calls for in the pattern as far as stitch counts for the cuff and heel or cuff and foot i mean um i did change the heel in this pattern it was no i did not it was a slip stitch so the heel is the exact same as it calls for in the pattern i did change the toe on this one um the toe is quite short almost like a long wedge um, and I hadn't done that before and um, I had made the sock to measure for a round toe or a um, like a typical uh, wedge toe so I just went ahead and did that so I did change the toe of this pattern but I don't think you can notice it too much as far as when you're wearing it um, but yes so that is done which of course brings us into works in progress and what I'm working on now I forgot to mention what that pattern is. Um, it is the Most Ardently Socks by Kelly Menzies is how I would pronounce it and how I've seen it um, pronounced online, but also known as Roro and Cades here on YouTube. She has a lovely podcast, go check her out. But these are her patterned socks. This is where I am on the second sock. Let's see if I can. This is where I am on the second sock. Just got the cuff done and I did this this morning. So not too far on that, but these are my emotional support sock. So they are not really, really active. 
they're just there for when I need a couple of minutes of, of work to do on a sock and I don't want to pick up a body of a sweater or a sleeve of a sweater and I just want to have a few minutes of knitting. Um, so that's what these are for. So I did cast on the cuff of this sock so that I can work on that during my quick few minutes this week. Um, hopefully this one will be done by next podcast. It is knit in a dyer that is no longer dyeing but is a North Carolina local sheep dip dye works. The colorway is purple haze and it was a um, two at a time um, skein so they came in 250 gram skeins and then I wound them up into 250 gram cakes. It's looking slightly more yellow on this screen but that is likely because I have a yellow rug sitting next to me and the sun is quite bright today thankfully and so it's reflecting a lot of yellow but yes so this is the second one and I'm still working on the first one because it's a shorty pair of socks so it should not take a whole lot of yardage to complete those so my plan is to finish this cake and then move into this one and then put this one as a contrast color or add it into my scrappy blanket so that is the plan for that um i don't think there's anything else to mention about this pattern specifically just that it is not a super active work in progress just something that i like to pick up here and there it is living in my fat squirrel ghosty bag um this is an amazing sock bag. I don't know why I don't have any of her other sock bags, but these are going to be on my wish list from now on because even if you're not doing a sock, if you're doing a small shawl or hat or, you know, some of those smaller projects, this is perfect because it's um, quite deep, but not big. It's not a huge project bag. So it's a perfect size, but I'm enjoying that one. My next project is my test knit that I showed you guys last week. So this is the Sticks Season sweater. I'll put a picture here of Rebecca's um, sample picture just so that you can get an idea of how it looks in the end. Um, so I am currently working on the body of this sweater. So this is one of my body islands and where I was last time was what at this little ghosty marker. So I had just finished the patterned section of the yoke and then I started in on the body. This is hard to show off. So I'm just doing stockinette in the round and as I was trying to show you guys last time on the underarm and down the side of the body it's going to have this ribbed detail which is really nice and actually helps break up the monotonous stocking it in the round because every once in a while you're stopping and doing some ribbing and moving those markers around there um so yeah this one is just a body island working through i had planned to switch to a um sorry if you can hear a plane going overhead but i planned to switch to uh, the sleeves after i finished the cake of yarn that i was on and i am glad that i didn't because the next cake of yarn that I selected or had left in my bag was slightly darker than the other one. So I am not alternating skeins in this project. Typically, um, Explorer Nissen Fibers, their yarn is very, very consistent and you don't really notice a difference in those. But the cake that I picked up was slightly darker and it is the only one out of all the skeins that I have, which is a total of 10, that have that slight darker color. So I think it was just in a different batch and that's why it's darker. So that one is still caked up and I'll use it in a hat at another time. I don't need it for the sweater so I'll pop it over there. So these are the, this is the yarn that I'm using. Explore Knits and Fibers. Rocky's DK in Avenir, I think is how we pronounce that. And it is a blue purple. This is where I pulled out the a test sample of that skein so that I could see if it was darker. But it is a blurple. It's kind of a dark, dusty blue purple. 
Um, you can kind of see that a little bit better in the cake, but my cake is getting quite small. Um, my cake is getting a little small because this, um, this one's almost done. And when I finish this one, I might start on the sleeves just to break up Body Island because that's a lot of body. But um, I tried this on right after this green marker right here. So um, that's where I was kind of keeping my own progress to show that I was actually making progress on the body. I tried it on right after that and it was just below um, the boobs. So just below the bra line. And so I have quite a bit to go because I want it to be quite a longer sweater, definitely down to my hips. I don't want it to be a crop sweater because I will wear it most likely with jeans or leggings. And while those are high waisted, I don't want to show off the belly area. So it'll likely be a longer sweater. I have plenty of yarn for it, so I'm not worried. Um, I had picked up 10 skeins of this and this estimate of what I'll need is about six. So I'll have plenty to go for this particular knit. Nothing else really to mention other than when I did add in that second color, it was quite late at night. And so I was working on it in low light in my room and I had done maybe four or five rounds before I realized, you know, this is a little bit darker. Um, and so I tinked back. So I didn't pull out my needles and rip back. I tinked back. So that took a little bit of progress and was a pain. <laughs> but um, that's something that we need to talk about today as well when we get to the section where I talk about progress and what we think we need to do and what is actuality and tinking is part of that. So this one is living in my other ghosty bag. It outgrew its um, bunny bag so it is now living in the larger sweater bag it fits perfectly in here and especially when I wind up these next two cakes to have them ready there's plenty of room in here to uh, facilitate this sweater so this is just going to be body island for a little bit and then maybe switch to some sleeves um, and continue going with that so hopefully this one may be in a point where I can try it on for you guys next week um, I almost said next week, next episode in two weeks, I'll be able to try that on and show you where I'm at. Possibly be done because sleeves go pretty quick for me, as you'll see in my next project. But sleeves go pretty quick for me, so maybe it'll be done or at least be ready for the collar. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, expectations and hopes and dreams, different things. Um, so the last work in progress, well, not my last one. I should say I did also work on my granny stripe blanket um, that I showed in the very first like whip parade episode I did. Um, I did work on that but I only did two colors which did a total of four stripes. So I didn't think I would show that to you guys with just having like three fourths of an inch um, completed. So I'll probably show that when it gets a little bit more progress but I did work on that um, one night in the past two weeks and did a little bit of work on that. But the last work in progress now is my Tulsa tea. This is a little bit of a mess, so hopefully you'll be able to see it all right. But there's a lot of strings, a lot of cords, a lot going on. Um, let's see, the back is here. So when I showed this to you last time, it's caught on the yarn. When I showed this to you last time, it was right here on the increases so about where my finger is I had done the yoke I have finished the raglan increases and started very very small on the body so about three rounds total on the body and then I was like no I'm not having three projects on body island I will not survive that these projects will languish I will cast on a million socks and nothing will happen so I decided to pick up sleeves. Now, do not pick up your sleeves right after you have split for the body. Give it a little bit more inches and you will be a lot more comfortable in your knitting because I have fought with this in strings and just being really, really loose. But we're there, we did it. Um, I completed one sleeve, so the right arm sleeve is complete. 
I'm ready to go. That looks really funky on this screen <laughs> with all the specs. But the right sleeve is complete um, and ready to go. I have the funniest looking cuff. It looks so tiny and scrunchy, but um, I'll explain what happened with this later. And then I picked up yesterday, caught again on the bag, I picked up yesterday for the second sleeve and I'm about 10 decreases in on that. So the reason why it's a little bit hectic and the reason why it is a little bit more complicated and a lot of work has gone into this in the past two weeks is I knit this right sleeve twice. I was about, I'm going to say here on the sleeve so just a little bit left when I tried it on and it was a little bit awkward to try on with the cords and everything but I tried it on it was um about right here on my wrist and it was huge um it was very billowy around my arm and I just realized it's not going to be what I want um I prefer a much slimmer sleeve not tight at all but a much slimmer sleeve I'm not into the bishop sleeve or the big poofy sleeves or you know big hang down sleeves I don't know what those are called but uh, bell sleeves I think so I'm much more into a just standard straight sleeve decreased evenly so the problem is I am not an expert in garment making I have only made myself a few garments I've only made other people a few garments and typically my garments are a little bit oversized because I'm afraid that they'll be too small when I make them. So typically make them a little bit bigger and that may be a problem here. I may have gone up a size that I don't need, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not ripping all the way back to start a new size. Um, I think the body is actually going to be perfect. The arms were the problem. And I don't know if it was necessarily a problem that they're too big for what they're made for because this is a t-shirt this is meant to be about where this sleeve is here and if you try it on it billows out just like this you have plenty of room nice and loose but i am changing the pattern into a long sleeve shirt so i am there's no guide on how many i need to decrease i've only ever decreased a pattern so i was making it up as i go so I started out with decreasing eight stitches, no, eight, two stitches every eight rounds. So I would knit seven and then decrease on the eighth. And that's what I was doing for the majority of the sleeve and it was going to be way too big. So I ripped back. Um, I was almost done with the sleeve, but I knew that I was not going to be happy with the way that it looked and the way that it fit on me. So I pulled it out um, this past Monday, just ripped it out and started over and I started over and what this is is knit four rounds normally and then decrease two stitches and I did that all the way down until I got to where I wanted my cuff to start and then I did the cuff and I tried on the cuff and it was again too big it was hanging down I knew that wasn't going to be something that I wanted so I ripped back the cuff again and decreased very rapidly which you can probably see there and decreased by 28 stitches um that's a lot of stitches <laughs> um it was not quite half but a little bit more than a third of no not quite half yeah a little bit more than about a third of of the stitches yeah um that i decreased so the cuff looks very very tiny but if i stick my arm in here and not get caught on all the cords that are inside it fits perfectly it's nice not too tight and when it's on it billows a little bit at the end so that it has kind of this little bit of poof um but not too fancy um just a simple sleeve so that is where i am on the sleeve so knit four then decrease two on the fifth round is where i'm at and I have about 16 more. It was about 24 decreases in total that I did. Um, again, this is a paid for pattern, but I am free styling the sleeve. So I don't think it's bad to give that information out because it doesn't give you any information about the actual pattern. Um, and yarn management is the other thing that I struggled with. 
So you can see there's a couple of places here that it started pooling. Um, you can see this one kind of started going in a boomerang shape and then up again at the end it started pooling a little bit more and it's different on each side sometimes. I know this sleeve has like a row of circles <laughs> that came in um, just after I started decreasing and it started again here but then it started working itself out. Um, I did on this sleeve several times because I didn't like the way that the yarn was doing. I I flipped this inside out to show you. I pulled a length of yarn so that I could start another speckle. Um, I did that about three or four times on this sleeve and I've only done it once on the, the left sleeve but most likely what I'll do and have been thinking about is on the sleeves that have or on the spots that have like these big circles that I don't like I will take a length of yarn that has a speck and maybe do a duplicate stitch. Um, I don't know how to do duplicate stitch yet, but that'll be something that I would be happy to learn and go from there. So that's where I'm at on that. I will hopefully finish this sleeve and then begin on the body. The other reason why I started my sleeves is yarn management because this is the yarn. I don't even think I've told you this pattern. Sorry. <laughs> um, this is the Tolsta Tea by Rebecca Klo. Um, the um, Stick Season sweater is also by Rebecca Klo. I don't think I mentioned that either, but anyway, brain's not working. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I had a giant baby grand cake from Skin Cocaine in the colorway Iconic. And the actual label and how it's listed or was listed on the website because it's been a couple years is that there's just 2,000 plus yards of yarn. So I don't actually know how much is in here other than it's over 2,000. I did not weigh the yarn. This is my problem. I did not weigh the yarn before I started the project and after I did the yoke, I did measure it um, or weigh it and I had about three and a, 350 grams. Yes, 350 grams. Um, left on the cake um, and after I finish the sleeve I will weigh it again and I'm just going to knit until I run out of yarn for the body so that is another reason why I started on the sleeve so early to get those out of the way and so I can just knit the body until it's done so that is the Tulsa tea so that leads me into the talking bit of today's episode expectations and ripping back or fudging it like where that comes from and what how my brain seems to think about that and kind of a discussion I want to hear from you guys on how you feel about when you have to tink back or if you have to fudge something because something didn't work out quite right or your expectations in knitting knitting is a hobby it is enjoyable and you shouldn't be stressed about it in the sense of making a certain amount every day. Um, I was kind of down yesterday when I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to record the podcast tomorrow. I don't have enough to show. I did nothing. Um, I've ripped back to most of the stuff and, you know, I should have more progress because of that. And how am I going to explain that, oh, I didn't do as much as I thought I would. And I think, and that's not necessarily because of the video. I've done that before just in my weekly, you know, review of my own what did I knit this week but I knit a lot um and everyone's knitting time is different everyone has a different amount of time but I knit quite a bit than I more than I expected if you take a step back and look at I finished a sock I you know made basically three sleeves because of having to rip back and I've had to tink back and that also led me to thinking about tinking back or ripping back versus fudging it um, because there was a point on the sleeve when it was down here I had made the whole sleeve and I was like I don't want to rip it all the way back like this is I spent so much time my entire weekend last weekend was knitting the sleeve I don't want to take it back but I'm not going to be happy with the result of the sleeve being too billowy 
I thought, well, maybe I can do like rapid decreases for the next little bit, but then it's going to be billowy up here and then fitted down here. And that's not going to be something I want. So ultimately I ripped it back and began again. And I don't mind that. I don't mind ripping back, but I also don't mind fudging it. I am a person that if it's like you get to the end of the row and you're missing two stitches, mm -mm, make two. Make, make one, then a few, make one. You'll be fine. It's not going to make that big of a difference to add a couple stitches or take away a couple stitches in the middle. It's not going to be a problem. But in the case of that sleeve or in the case of a sock that you know that's not going to fit or a hat that you know is going to be too giant on anyone, rip it back. Start again. That's the beauty of knitting is that the yarn can be easily removed and start again once you start knitting it's not solid like it's not confirmed you're not going to mess it up um, with exceptions of you know unspun and uh, mohair and things like that there's exceptions but even then start it again um, be okay with starting again because it's a process and knitting is a slow art it is a slow make it is a slow creation and so take the time and enjoy every little stitch of it so that's my discussion let me know your thoughts on ripping back or tinking back or fudging it in cases let me know let me know how you feel about it all right thank you for indulging me in a little bit of talking um a lot of that is to tell myself that it is okay that your expectations that you had for the week didn't work out things happen enjoy the craft enjoy knitting enjoy what you're making and then also be okay with ripping back or fudging either way um so a little bit of lessons that i learned this past two weeks so now let's get into some acquisitions i don't have too much um just a order from nerdy knits i placed an order right after i finished my grandma socks the ones that were like the dusty blue on um, the stray cap i think no dead city from stray um and i really really enjoyed the yarn and so i quickly placed another order but i don't know if right after that right before that maybe it just wasn't noted but the base has changed um, and that's not a big deal for me. It is still a very, very squishy base. I was just hoping for that super tight, squishy eight ply. But this is a beautiful four ply high twist. It's going to be just as lovely. Um, so I placed an order for a couple colors that I can make some socks for Christmas or some hats or something like that um, in a beautiful DK. So the first one that I ordered is this colorway. And I'm going to show you the label there first of Nerdy Knit. The first one that I ordered is this one, which I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Rauru? Rauru? Probably? Uh, but this is from the Tears... Tears of the Kingdom. That's what it's called. Tears of the Kingdom video game, the Zelda game. Um, and it is just blues, oranges, browns. It's beautiful and I cannot wait to make some socks out of this. Um, so this is the first one that I got. And then I saw this colorway, which they're different. I'm going to hold them together. They <laughs> don't look too different, but they're different. Um, when I first pulled them out, I was like, did I order two of the same ones? Um, but yeah, very different. This one has more of teal and this one has more pink. Um, so this one is called Ellie, which is, I think it's called Little Witch in the Woods, possibly. Um, which I don't think she has anymore on her website. I think this is one of the ones that she pulled out because she's starting a couple of new collections. But this one has more deep purples and this beautiful mauve pink color. But it is called Ellie, which is the main character in that Little Witch in the Woods game. And then this one is called Cinder Sap, which I don't remember the collection that this one is from, but it is just a beautiful green color um, all on DK 100% superwash yarn um, superwash merino wool and cannot wait to make some socks of those for Christmas that is all the acquisitions that I have just that small order from nerdy knits 
I am awaiting a package that I thought might be here. Um, so I'll have to show you that next time. But it is a, a needle, like an actual like darning needle keeper. Um, but it is coming all the way from the Ukraine. So it took some time to get here. But I was notified this morning that it is in the U.S. And it's in North Carolina. So I'll get that probably this week. So it'll be here to show you next week. Um, all right. Let's talk life stuff. Um, so other than the surviving body island and learning that my expectations, it's okay if they don't quite meet up while I am knitting because knitting is supposed to be fun, ripping back, all of that fun stuff. Um, not too much has gone on in my personal life. I'm continuing to, um, walk and read the messy middle. I have about three hours left on that book and then I'm sure we'll start another one but my walking was shortened a little bit because of some other life stuff that's been going on. Charlie had her update uh, or her update visit, her check-in visit about the mass that she had in her abdomen. So we just had another scan done just to make sure that it's no, not growing and that it is most likely a fatty deposit and that is what it seems like it is. There was no growth so thankfully all is well. Um, she of course has been very upset with me this weekend because I took her to the vet um, but I'm sure she'll get over it eventually. <laughs> there was one time she refused snacks from me. Just flat out refused to take a snack for me but then asked my mom for one so it was definitely me that she was um punishing for taking her to the vet um we also had Ophelia um which I don't know exactly if it went to a category one but I know that it was strengthening pretty quickly as it approached the coast but we had tropical storm Ophelia um this Friday and Saturday um and it was a little bit more than I expected it to be as far as strength. That's why I think it may have ramped up a little bit. We did not receive any damage. Thankfully, there was just a couple of limbs from the trees and a little bit of cleanup to do from that. But there was some flooding locally and some power outages and power lines down and things like that. But nothing, thankfully, too, too major going on there. And I think that is all that I have for life stuff. I know that books is kind of a thing that gets talked about a lot in knitting podcasts. So I'm not a huge reader, but I am reading the Throne of Glass novella. I think it's, yes, it's called The Assassin's Blade. Um, so it's kind of a prequel, but came out later. Anyway, my sister told me that's where I should start. So I am reading The Throne of Glass series and currently reading the assassin's blade i'm a little bit um halfway through it but i am a very slow reader so i'll update you <laughs> when i finish this and what i think of it but um yeah i'm not a usually a multi-book reader i am listening to the messy middle but i kind of consider that more of a podcast than an actual book it's kind of listening to the guy's thoughts about startups and how best to do them so that's a little bit different but this book I also have on audiobook so I may switch to that when I am walking on the weekends and not for work but that's my books um watching as far as what I am watching uh, I know that's something else that gets talked about a lot on podcasts so I figured I would add that in here um I just finished the second season third season I finished the most recent season of Strange New Worlds. Um, so that was fantastic. Loved this season. It was very um, different from the other season. At least the season I remember. I can't remember if there's two seasons in that one or if there's only one. But that was pretty fantastic. I watched The Little Mermaid, the new Disney movie. Also fantastic. Um, great adaption of that movie. Really enjoyed the music in it. What else am I watching? Um... I'm watching a show with my friend. I don't know why I can't think of the name of it. It's on Paramount. And it's about high schoolers. Um, and she's dead. And they're ghosts in the high school. School Spirits. Uh, it's called School Spirits. So I have been watching that with my friend. And it's really interesting. It reminds me a lot of... I don't know why 
my names are not coming to me. It reminds me a lot of Broad Church, um, which is a BBC show with David Tennant and there's like a murder that happens and throughout the entire season you're trying to figure out who was the murderer and each time you watch an episode you think it's someone else um, and I don't know who it is yet because we're only like on the fourth episode but each time that we watch it you think it's another person you're convinced it's another person and then on the next episode you're like no 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 it's definitely that person that's the person that did it so really enjoying that lots of twists and turns and it's just an interesting concept of there's a ghost that she died in the school and she's trying to figure out her own murder while the school and her family are actually looking for her because they don't know that she's dead because there's nobody. So it's an interesting show. I definitely recommend it so far. I'll keep you updated um, as I continue watching. But I think that is it for today. Thank you again for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give it the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can be notified whenever a new episode comes out. And there's a lot of exciting things coming up um, as far as life stuff for me. Um, little hints, I am going to a Fiverr Festival in October. No, it's not Rhinebeck, but it's definitely on the same weekend. So I am excited to go to that and show you um, what I find there and the experience there. I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye.